name is Jessie Ace. I'm part of a group of enabled warriors that you've probably never heard of. We're fighting back against our invisible illness and taking the dis out of disability. We don't give sympathy to our symptoms. They enable us to be the warrior that we are. If you asked doctors and nurses, they'd say what we're doing is impossible. But pushing the limits of our conditions is something that we have to break through every single day. We push the limits. We are mentally strong. And we can do anything. The question is, how far can we push those limits? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Jessie Ace, and this is the Disabled to Enable podcast. Before we get started today, we have a small announcement to make, which is that we have decided to take a little bit of a break and put the show on hiatus after next week's episode. For more info on that, it will be coming in the next week. So if you want to know more, check in to next week's episode. If you're a long-time listener to the show, you've enjoyed this podcast and you want to say a huge thank you, then please go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash disabled to enabled, and you can go and thank us there. Thank you so, so much. And let's go and find out who is today's guest. So today's guest, Enabled Warriors, is an actor who has done over 30 commercials and voiceovers for clients like McDonald's, Fruit of the Loom, and the NFL, and who now runs a YouTube vlog about life with multiple sclerosis with over 4,000 subscribers. Enabled Warriors, please help me in welcoming to the show the amazing Demi Washington, everybody! Woo! Man, I feel way illustrious and way exalted with such an introduction. (laughs) <laughs> it's up, Damien. <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. It's awesome to speak to you. Please, thank for you, thank you for being here, having me here, and wanting to chop it up with me today, Jesse. <laughs> okay, let's get straight into the first part of our episode by chatting about your initial diagnosis. Like, how did you first know that something was wrong? Well, my wife first realized something was wrong. She and I had been together by sixteen years at the time. 15, 16 years, and she noticed something was wrong. She's like, mm, you hold me differently when you walk down the street. Mm, like, your energy is just off. And um, I'm a generally high energy guy, and uh, I was doing something uh, rather typical a music video, a high energy music video with a bunch of people. And um, I just found my energy was just zapped, just wiped. I could not really do anything in the normal way in which I usually uh, did it. And that's when I knew between my uh, wife's understanding and my own not being able to do something that is uh, simple for me to do. Uh, Between those two things, I knew something was wrong. Mm, That's interesting, isn't it? So, So what kind of happened after that point? Did you kind of go, right, okay, to the doctors, let's go sort this out. Or did you do what I did and wait like a week before you went? (laughs) because you didn't want to know what they said (laughs) no 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 I went to one doctor and they didn't know what was going on so I went to another doctor and they didn't know what was going on and then I tried to um, get um, more information in the emergency essentially I two doctors did not know what was wrong with me and then um, my wife and I went to take a walk around the street and uh, when I got home to take off my shoes I, I fell down like I didn't you know trip or I, I I was flat looking at the ceiling and she was like all right that's it I don't care if these other two doctors don't know what's going on with you we are going to emergency care and we are not leaving until we know what's wrong with you um and then that doctor was like I don't know what's wrong with you stick them in an, <laughs> and a, stick them in an MRI uh-huh. um and the MRI is like oh yeah this guy's totally healthy he also has multiple sclerosis. That dude needs to get a neurologist stat and get that worked on because yeah. <laughs> that's how I found out, you know? That's a really interesting way to find out, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it sounds like you have an awesome wife, I've got to say. Absolutely. Um, yin, yang, uh, yin, yang, I don't know how to pronounce. Anyway, bottom line, she's, um, we complement each other very well. Um, and she, there was a point, at w- her advice is outside of my head, but because she's so close, I trust it. So when it sounds like something that I'm not even thinking about, or I think 
um, has another outcome behind it. If she presents it, then I'm like, well, I have to think about this differently. And not that I have to think about this differently. It behooves me to <laughs> think about it differently because I've been around long enough uh, to be on both sides of that. And I know that I'm usually, if she notices something and I don't, um, I need to figure that out like sooner rather than later. Because if I figure it out later, it doesn't work out as well for me as the times in which I figure it out sooner. You know, yeah. that's a long convoluted sentence to be like, yeah, my wife knows her stuff. <laughs> she knows her stuff, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good. It's really good. So how does your MS kind of affect you day to day now? All day, every day, all the time. Every time, like, no. It's a, <laughs> right? You know, I, I write. Uh, my balance isn't so good. Uh, I have a strange spasticity in my knees. Um, if I don't sort of keep an eye on my fatigue level slash um, I overdo it, like, I'm, I'm wiped. I'm done. Mm. Um, a small thing like the optic neuritis every now and then can start to present itself like if I'm tired or did I eat the wrong thing that I probably shouldn't have eaten in the first place <laughs> um, it's the right it's those little things that um, thankfully um, the larger issues that I uh, once have um, found myself dealing with are um, more diminished and uh, right these days, it's just a general glaze of <laughs> that is that is MS I get uh, that. that I contend with, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's funny when you say, um, like, if you get more tired, then strange things start happening, because that happens to me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's a sort of, um, you start to, if you've done it enough times, you sort of recognize that it's coming. And because it's such a small window and you don't, you really don't have to do so much to cross that other side. Yeah. You say, oh, okay, well, it's easy to dismiss or easy to think differently. But, you know, you end up on the other side enough times that <laughs> you, you, you say, hmm, this is a point of recognition. I can either keep going like a normal person or stop like a person who has multiple sclerosis. Mm. I think I'm going to stop like a person who has multiple sclerosis now. <laughs> do you do you stop most often uh 50 50 yeah <laughs> I was say, cause I don't, i'm just like nah i'll just i'll just uh, 50 -50. do something tomorrow <laughs> yeah no it's it really depends because it, again like i've just i've just been on the other side of it and, it and that is not fun and those memories and those experiences um are potent enough to carry with me um and to have me um reference to know that, well, if I push it, I could feel like that. Or hmm, if I eat this, then I will feel like that. Bottom line, you have enough data to choose from and you make your choice. Do I push it here? Uh, do I, you know, respect my boundaries, my new disease to modified boundaries yeah. <laughs> and, and chill out here? Um, it, it, it really is dependent on the day of the time, but I really aim to just chill. Chill totally and it, that comes with experience as well doesn't it it's like if you're newly diagnosed right now and you're totally freaking out like how how can you predict this how can you kind of manage this like it comes in time it's not over yeah you you have to learn your own everybody's ms is individual that means you your ms is going to be different than mine or jesse's or anyone who is not you so you, in order to know what your limits are and your boundaries are you might have to cross them and you might have to cross them numerous times so that that experience gives you enough weight in your brain to be like, mm, I'm not going to do that again. I don't care what my current voice is like, say, oh, no, just push to just a little bit longer. Okay. It's like, no, I'm not listening to that voice. I'm listening to the voice who has been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and been down this road before and knows how crappy he's felt afterwards. And I'm going to speak up and be like, you're not gonna you don't need to feel like that or just know if you're gonna do that there's a good chance you might feel not so sweet do what you want yeah but you've got you've got to push that limit and you've got to actually go further than it to kind of know where that limit is and how far that can be pushed that is huge and i definitely learned that when i started running um a 10k i realized was a bit too much for me at the time I did not train well for that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> no, 
you bet you should really start off with like a thousand meters like <laughs> like a 10k that's a lot of k's i done five <laughs> and i was like well i could do five so i can do 10 and i didn't really train enough so you know those things happen <laughs> <laughs> absolutely like yeah no i did five no sweat sure i can do double give me double let's go and yeah, then like double. halfway through the extra half you're like oh i don't think this is a good idea at all <laughs> yeah that was kind of the first half to be honest i was like why did i do this <laughs> why mm. Mm. it's because i interviewed uh cheryl heil on the show who has done over 50 marathons with ms and i was like well if you can do a marathon i can do 10k yeah yeah, that was Whoa. my face as well. <laughs> exactly. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So anyway. You did 20 marathons with MS? She did 50. <laughs> I know you can't see this right now, Neighbor Warriors, but Damien is pulling quite a face right now, and that is hilarious. Yeah, you guys, I live, um, my <laughs> face is my, is, it's rather elastic, um, and you know what I'm feeling and thinking by looking at it so you missing my face you are certainly having half of the experience removed in a in a way in which is different from the normal population hundred <laughs> percent let's just take a short break to thank our sponsors enabled warriors do you want to win a copy of the enabled warrior symptom tracker book for free the Symptom Tracker book will allow you to track your symptoms, instantly spot triggers, and get the best care possible from your doctors. Dr. Gretchen Hawley from the MSing Link said, it was brilliant for those with chronic illnesses to give their doctors more accurate information. Recording these nuggets of information can be a game changer in receiving the best care for you and your symptoms. Inside the book, you'll find everything that you need to live your best life with chronic illness. Have you ever sat in an appointment and couldn't recall when your symptoms started, how long they lasted, the date of your first relapse, how long you've been on medication. Oh, me too. It's so annoying. That's why I made these pages in the book to help with this. Do you want to find out what foods are triggering your symptoms? Great. That's in the book too. Do you wish that you could wake up feeling positive and energetic every single day? The daily sheets in this book will help you do just that. Enter the giveaway by going to www.mybookgiveaway.com and enter your details through the message on Facebook Messenger that will pop up. If you are impatient and you want one now, then go get your Enabled Warrior Tracker book from www.enabledwarriors.org slash book. Both of the links are in the show notes, so go and click them there. And get in control of your chronic illness today and start living the life you deserve. Stay Enabled Warriors. Now let's get back to our guest. But anyway, back to you. Um, are you on a treatment right now? Yes, I am. I am mm. on a disease modifying therapy that I take twice a year. Ooh, which one are you on? Ocrevus. I didn't know if we could drop brand names. I'm sorry. I'm um, I'm on Ocrevus, and I've been on Ocrevus a few years. A few years now. Yeah. Because that's how about you? Twice a year, isn't it? Yeah. How about you? Mm. So I'm on Tecfidera, so that's like blood Ooh, test every That's once a month. Months. Yeah, you got to take that twice a day. Twice a day? Yeah, but it's better than injections because that was not fun. Oh, I did not get on with that. Tecfidera is the pill. It is, yeah. Uh, and how's that working out for you? It's good. It's good. I've been on that for like five years now. A bit rough in okay. the beginning, but it's all good. It's leveled yeah. out. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's okay. Ocrevus been for you? Uh, no new disease activity. Um, oh, nice. And not much re infusion reactions. So that's that it works. It's good <laughs> with a lot of air quotes going on. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, look, I don't, you don't want to have any of this stuff going through you. The MS, the, mm. the pharmaceutical, you just want to like, you know, sit under a tree and like eat green tea. Or drink green tea and like, you know, <laughs> I don't even know eat what right now. Um, bottom line is you don't want to be doing anything differently than what grow from the ground and <laughs> come from the sky. So the fact that, you know, one has to change their entire world just to feel somewhat near a human being, mm -hmm. plus take all of these supplements and pharmaceuticals and like yeah they're all safe and everything but it's just something extra for you to deal with that's that's all that face was totally and like side effects side effects are often kind of worse aren't they <laughs> let's be honest 
<laughs> Absolutely. It's how I'm even on this med. The I was on the one of the more um I'm not calm, not less efficacious. That's not what I would say. I, mild. So I was on one of the more mild therapies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was on one of the more mild therapies, and then I stepped it up to have some more strength. But those side effects, man, they were horrible. It was as if I had gone out on a huge drinking night with my friends, <laughs> and like every other day, mm. and like it was, and it was the worst hangover I have ever experienced in my entire life and mm -hmm. that was every other day and for doing that for like three four months it's like I can't do this anymore I need yeah. another therapy you know which one was that one that you were on that one was Rebif so oh, I was on Rebif went, too yeah how did you did not like that, that. Did yeah not. see well how did you feel awful it's like having the flu or something it was just gross and like it was like oh i can't even explain it it's like kind of like a bee sting it came out in like a bee sting every time mm. and it was like acid mm. being injected like it was not pretty it's not one i choose mm. to be honest yeah, well yeah i stuck with it because i'm a guy who sticks with things yeah me too um yeah, i stick with things but as i'm going through it i'm like yo i don't know if i can do this anymore bro this is mm. i didn't even drink last night and i feel like i have this horrible hangover so yeah. what's up at least there's this brief period of you know fun and terrible decisions being made all the way through the inebriated period uh before you get to the hangover me i just have ms <laughs> exactly that's not cool <laughs> it's not too bad is it like come on no. Just give me give me something different. You know what I'm saying? It's like if this is my if this is my input, and now I if just the injection is my input, and I feel like this, we're gonna need a different input, friend. We need to talk about that. <laughs> we, need, we need we need to get this going. We need right. to work this out because this is right. not going to happen every other day for the rest of my life. Mm. How long were you on it for? Just out of interest. Yeah, three four months. Really? About the fourth month, yeah, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Again, I'm, um, I think that's why it, I've been able to find some success in the vlog space because I'm a guy who does things repeatedly by rote, no matter what the current circumstances are. If I have an idea, if I have a vision, if I have something that I'm holding out here and I'm going toward, there is not one thing that is going to stop me, especially the things that are in my body, like my, you know, gait or walk or whatever, or my thoughts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, if this is the way, this is the way, let's go. And I'm like, oh, this hurts, but this is the way, so let's go. And then like four months of like, eh, this is the way, let's go. Yes. <laughs> the doctor's like, yo, bro, don't, it don't got to be like this. You know, you can switch meds, but I'm like, this is the way, let's go. <laughs> and he's like, no, bro, <laughs> let's just get you on a different med. And I'm like, thank you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I'm glad that they put you on a different one because that, that was enough. The rebiff was just enough. I was on it for an, over a year. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I know, and look at me, like, there's like no fat on me, and I was twice as thin back then. It was not a fat. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. another thing about this whole um, creator space, Jesse. Your experience is tied to mine and mine tied to yours. We don't know each other. Um, and the shared experiences that we have um, in our own respective ways get shared on the internet as people telling our stories and we see ourselves in the other person and there's not many opportunities for you to see yourself in other folks if you have something like ms so when that comes along and you experience that you're like yeah no i want some more of that that's cool let me subscribe to this podcast and all this vlog and or talk to this person you know what i'm saying 100 percent, yes 100 percent, absolutely so Let's wrap up this section. Is there anything that you wish someone had told you when you were newly diagnosed? 
I wish somebody had told me it's going to be okay. I think that as well as I'm doing right now, I've had to find this wellness. And before I started vlogging, I, I was in bad shape, man. I was in bad shape, like not being able to walk very far or not being able to drive, um, things like that. So because things can be so arduous and like intricate um, in a way in which you don't understand um, at first, because who has experienced uh, these sorts of these these sorts of things um but you can find there it not only does it get better you it get it gets better because you get better um and you work within the context of uh, not the disease but of your your health mm. you work in your health context differently and as you figure that out you are going to not only find wellness and community and a better sense of self, you're, you're going to be able to have more of a smile on your face. <laughs> um, when, you know, it, frankly, the disease just rips that from you. Mm, definitely. Yeah, that's such a, such good advice there. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm sure if you're newly diagnosed and listening to that, you'd be like, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be okay. okay. I, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know um, what you are going to change. Most importantly, I don't know what you are going to have to change within yourself in order to begin to have different health outcomes. And that's one of the biggest, hardest things to face, pills to swallow, like pick the metaphor. Once you have to do something have a set of habits outside of yourself and uh, then make them yours. That's extremely difficult to recognize and understand and maintain. And you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be okay. 100%. Yes, of course it's going to be okay. And remember, it's not the cards that you dealt in life. It's how you play the game that counts. Best quote ever. That's the ace in the space, ladies and gentlemen. You heard what I said. (laughs) Take it to the church. Matter of fact, take it to the bank. It's around the corner from the church, you heard? I love it. Let's head into part two, guys. That is the end of part one, guys. How awesome was that? How, I can't believe what was shared. Thank you so much as well to you for spending time with us. And remember, to go and check out the show notes for your freebies, including free access to your new favorite Spotify playlist full of empowering songs for enabled warriors. That was the perfect pick-me-up on a bad day and join us next time to find out what our guest today has managed to do because of their diagnosis we will see you there warriors hey i'm over here giving you a virtual high five right now enabled warrior because you just completed another episode of the disabled to enabled podcast and that is so awesome well done This time together has flown by though, so let's keep the conversation going. You are exclusively invited to join me in the Enabled Warriors Facebook group. We're a community of like-minded warrior friends with all kinds of different illnesses. We love playing games, doing quizzes, sharing our pet photos, and we are all there for each other through the bad times. All the links are waiting for you in the show notes, so we'll see you in there when you join.